Hey, thank you. I love this facility. I haven't been in this particular location, so it is marvelous. This is Jason Ford. He travels with me from time to time. <clears throat> he has his own ministry as well and travels a lot to Europe and to different African nations, etc. Uh, has anyway, I need because of time, I need to. Um, I could talk about him for quite a while, okay? <laughs> he is an amazing Barnabas uh, in my life, and I'm very grateful. I'm going to attempt to do a, um, a book signing at the close of this, and I have brought uh, newer books, but also things that relate to the prophetic, but I do as much in the prayer, global prayer movement as I do the global prophetic movement. <sighs> and so I'll just do this very fast. I'm going to give these to uh, Jason. He's going to give these books away. And this is my newest, and I believe, and I'm going to just hold Jason. I'm going to tell them all first, and then I'll give them to you. This is the newest. It's Revival Breakthrough. Preparing for Seasons of Glory, Awakening, and the Great Harvest. I believe out of the 45 to 50 books that I have either authored or co-authored, this is in my top three, if not the most timely authored book of everything that I have penned. And um, Randy Clark wrote the foreword. And then many of you have probably read The Seer. This version that has been, there's multiple versions of this. This has a, it's expanded edition that has, includes a 40-day devotional um, included in with this. And so, and I got the publisher to return to the original cover. Praise God. Hallelujah. I love this cover, you know, so, and I will be sharing this evening um, in the area of uh, 12 different categories of supernatural uh, visions. They'll be based out of this. This is the prophet, and this, I was asked by the publisher to write a modern day classic on the prophet. And they said, will you pray about it? And I said, no. <laughs> I said, I don't need to pray about it. I live this. And so the level of endorsements that this book received is quite frankly rather outrageous. And from whether it's Bishop Bill Hammond, Chuck Pierce, Bill John, I, I can't even begin to go. Literally, the level of endorsements that this received is probably beyond anything that I have ever composed. Because the uniqueness of this book is that I have a chapter in here on, how about women in the prophetic? <laughs> or prophets and the rejection syndrome. And hardly anyone touches that. I then have it on the prophetic and the seven cultural mountains. And I take us into then um, a gaze into the future. And then, and I have to do this quickly. This is extremely needed. The back reads, this is the discerner. Satan's number one weapon is deception. The church's number one need is discernment. Enough. Now, well, is the truth. And now, this, yeah, and then this book, The Feeler. You got to understand, I'm pioneering all over again like I did The Seer 20 years ago. The seer, then there's all kinds of books written today on the seer. But 
the seer has become a modern day classic then that many, many other people have then written then in that area. This then, the feeler, is pioneering all over again. Bill Johnson says this is the first book in church history written in this subject. And believe me, I worked very diligently, thoroughly, biblically, and then also in studying other literature, in psychology, and not only in depth of scripture, church history, Jewish and church precedent, but I really had to work hard at doing this well. Cindy Jacobs, here Jason, Cindy Jacobs read my manuscript, and she read it from cover to cover, and then, and she's, we're extremely close, and then she challenged me, because I was being very safe, because when you pioneer something, you must do it right, because then the second and the third generation after you are going to expand upon it and not be as accurate. I've learned these things. And so then though she challenged me, she says, James, I'm being blunt with you, and then I gotta get moving for my message with you. And she says, James, you wrote that book, The Feeler, out of your teacher. She said, I'm gonna do for you right now what Peter Wagner did for me. be tough and she said you wrote the book out of your teacher now you need to go back and write it out of your feeler so she challenged me to put in some storyline about what was it like as a kid growing up and having all of these emotions and what was it like being misunderstood as a seer but as a feeler. And I went ahead, and so I went back in, kept the content, but then added in narratives. And there you go. No, no. And it added in. Anyway, you get it. So, all right. Will you stand back to your feet? And I want to share with you. I'm going to give a label to this. I don't know that it's completely accurate, but increasing your capacity for awakening. Father, thank you for this time. And thank you for King of Kings. Thank you for our history together. Thank you for the senior leaders of Peter and Tricia Roselli. I bless this house. And in coming onto these grounds and being in this facility, I declare that this is a hallowed place. And I declare that this is historically, a hallowed campground. But even as the finger of God has come down a third time and even plus in Asbury, the finger of God is going to come down on this campground in Jesus' name. And people are going to come from all around because of the sacred holiness and manifest presence of God. And there is a magnetic draw presence of the Holy Spirit that is hovering over this geographical location. 
And I declare and I add my place of historical understanding of open heavens and portals to the blessing that rests upon this apostolic couple and upon, I had a dream this morning that was about a dream of an anointing upon a geographical area. And I did not know that you had even moved into a different uh, place. And so we drive up to here and I go, wait, wait, what? And then inside, I'm like in shock and awe. And I declare that there is a anointing even upon the geographical area here in Jesus' name. But I say the finger of God has and did and will come down once again. And as it was in many years ago, like an old time camp meetings, so there will be a finger of God that's, that's just the phrase that I'm, that's stuck on the inside of me. The finger of God shall come down and people will camp out because of the manifest presence of God. They shall come from regions all around and there will be like with Asbury. It's because this is a psalm. This is because this time it is a Psalm 24 revival. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord but he who has clean hands and a pure heart? The jealousy of the Lord is visiting his house once again. It will not be that someone will be able to steady the ark. But rather, we will be carriers of the ark of his divine presence. We will be schooled as it were, all over again in being carriers. Twenty years ago, the Holy Spirit gave an opportunity to be God chasers. But now he wants us to be God carriers. Oh, God carriers, God carriers, God carriers he is looking for. And thus I am going to increase your capacity for awakening by becoming God carriers. And you yourself become the ark of his presence. I am not looking for a one location where everybody comes to as it would be a Mecca. It will not be this time around where there is one location where everybody goes to Toronto. It will not be this time where everybody goes to Sunderland, England, or that everyone goes to, to, to Brownsville, although I was in that. This time, my finger, nor will it be that everyone will go to Kansas City or to Charlotte. This time, my finger is going to come down in so many places that it will not be said, have you been to? But rather it will be said, are you a carrier also?
are you a are you a carrier also? Just like there was a contagious disease that created a global pandemic. Well, there is something that is on the loose. That cannot be contained. And it is global in nature. And it will never be contained ever again. For I am giving marching orders in March to my people to be carriers of my brilliant presence. And to be contagious. And touch people. Do you not know that even in the natural, that most diseases are passed on by touch? Oh. 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 I want to give you a secret. Oh, I want to give you a secret. You know the secret. One touch of a glory carrier sets captives free. I'm prophesying to you, by the way. What's your name? What? Carolyn. Carolyn, you know this. One touch of a glory carrier sets the captives free. And you have been given keys of revelation of this. You know what it is like to be, as it were, in prison. And you now know what it's like to set prisoners free. And you will multiply, 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 multiply carriers of the glory. Because this is what sets people free. Is it teaching? Yes. Is it instruction? Yes. But it is the glory of God that sets prisoners free. And I have anointed you to preach the gospel. And I have anointed you to set prisoners free. I had a dream about a young King David this morning. I, I, I thought I'd forgotten my dreams. But then as I, we drove in here onto this property, I remembered the two, two dreams. The dream of anointing upon a geographical area, and it's this. And then I had a dream about a young king, young King David. Hi, David. And I just bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have served well. You will serve well. And there is not one ounce of an Absalom spirit in him. I just, I just need to like announce that and confirm that because we all go through as leaders tested by things like this, but there is not one ounce of an Absalom spirit in him that would steal something, take something, or prematurely take an inheritance. There is not. But you are chosen. You look at me. Hey, you look at me. (laughs) You're chosen. Samuel came to a house. 
And all that Samuel was told was he was to go to the house of Jesse. And he prayed through everybody who was in the house. And he got no witness, honey. And he had to say, is there anybody? And he had to say, is there anybody else? And he goes, well, there's this other kid. <laughs> he's out there on the hill. And, he, and, and, he, and he, he's, he's the original writer to The Sound of Music. <laughs> That's the Gaul Amplified version. <laughs> the hills are alive. And he's playing his guitar uh, with the sheep. And a good band will carry the smell of the sheep. I just say, from dream this morning, you'll meet a young King David. Say, blessed are you. Faithful in the house. And I think that's enough for me to say at this point in time. You may be seated. Increasing your capacity for, oh, that's, that's not mine. <laughs> that, that belongeth to another. <laughs> Yeah, the older kid, whatever. But I would like one of those. Yeah, no, it's what's better for me. Uh, yeah, no, no, seriously. Okay, anyway, yeah. So, it, okay, now I got to speed up because it's like already I took, you know. Anyway, but increasing your capacity for an awakening. So, God has a dream. In the preface of my Revival Breakthrough book, I walk in the spiritual gift of prophecy, and I receive many dreams from God while on assignments for him. And I have dreams about people and subjects that are important to the Lord. But recently, thank you, if you, thank you very much, sir. I prayed. I mean, I literally do this. Every place I go, I, and this is one of the primary ways that God works with me. He gives me dreams. And I get dreams on assignment. And I'll say, God, what's up? And then he talks to me like he did here. But one time, recently, I said, hey, God, do you have a dream? Very different. Very different. I'm very used to going, God, do you have a dream for this people? Do you have a dream for this city? Do you have a dream for a certain assignment? But instead, in this situation, I said, God, do you have a dream? And if you have a dream, would you like to share your dream with me? And if you share your dream with me, would you give me permission to share your dream with others? After this, I fell asleep. And I had a very simple dream in which I saw myself sitting up in bed with my Bible. And this Bible is very dear to me. It was this Bible. This Bible was given to me by my parents in 1983. How many years ago is that? 40. Right in the middle of when Mike Bickle called for the Joel's Army 21-day 
fast. And I participated in that. And I was ordained publicly to ministry. Now, I had been licensed before that. But I got ordained through the lineage of Derek Prince, Mahesh Shavda, and Jim Croft, and all of them. And this Bible was given to me by my parents. <laughs> he don't need to know all that, do you? But in the dream, I'm holding this Bible. So I brought this Bible with me today. And it says, our, oh Lord Jesus, this is just all crazy. Our son celebrating your ordination, April 16th, 1983, with love, mom and dad. Huh, see, that's right at 40 years ago. I met Bob Jones 40 years ago, right about now. I wish I had five hours with you right now. Yeah. And if you, if you share your dream with me, would you give me permission to share your dream with others? <clears throat> now, this is where this Bible comes in. After this, I fell asleep, and I had a simple dream in which I saw myself sitting up in bed with, with my Bible. I have many Bibles, okay? But my Bible. There's a difference. With my Bible. Crap, I'm gonna, I always should have shouldn't have said that. <laughs> okay, I'll start to cry. With my Bible open. In this dream, I could hear myself reading. But what did I just pray? God, do you have a dream? Would you share your dream with me? And if you give me your dream, what's your dream? Would you give me permission to share your dream with others? So I fall asleep. I have a dream. And in the dream, I'm sitting up in my bed, in dream, with my Bible wide open. I'm sitting up in my bed. Simple dream with this Bible wide open to Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3 because God has a dream and part of his dream is in Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3 where it reads, Arise, shine, your light has come for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you for behold, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people for the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Now listen to this. I woke up from this dream to find myself sitting up in my bed with my arms out as if I were holding something. I was also prophesying. From both this scripture I just read, Isaiah 61 to 3, and also, get this, from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. Now, how could I be doing this? Because the word of God was in me. Because this word was in me. And now the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so the word was in me, but this was God's dream. And then, so listen to this. Then I am wake up out of the dream. I'm sitting up in bed. It's this Bible that's sitting in my lap. How could that be? But it is. And then it's also, and, and I hear myself declaring Isaiah 61 to 3. I didn't even know I had it memorized. But guess what? God knows his own word. And on top of that, I am now then here myself proclaiming Habakkuk 2.14, where it says something very similar. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, and the knowledge 
of the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. And all I had done was I just prayed a prayer. And I said, God, do you have a dream? God, do you have a dream? Huh? And would you like to share it with me? And if you did, would you give me permission to share it with others? That's how this whole book came into being. I have a prophetic word for you. God has a dream in his heart. And it's about a great harvest of souls in his kingdom. It's about God's people being transformed more and more into the image of his son, Jesus. And most of all, it's about the manifestation of his glory. Oh, God wants to share this dream with us. And God wants to us to partner with him in his dream. God has a dream. Last time I was here with you, I actually remember some of the things I, I, I talked about. Now, isn't that fascinating? Because how many other messages have I done? A lot. And I remember some of what happened. And I'm going to rehearse this, but more thoroughly, because it's important. I told you about three signs that, Bob, that the Lord gave to Bob Jones that would be fulfilled as three prophetic signposts before the billion soul harvest, especially of youth, would begin. Now, I don't believe that that is a limitation of one billion being everything. I have had to pray into this for many years now. I don't, I don't believe that that is a final word. We see in part, we know in part, we prophesy in part, and even the best only prophesy in part. So I am not even saying that that is even the final harvest, because that is not what the Lord told Bob. I have researched this. I have interviewed people. I've listened to so many things. Anyway, so, but, but let me rehearse, because I have we listened to the interviews of Mike Bickle with Wesley Campbell. I have talked to many people, and let me rehearse this to you. And I'm going to contextualize this in such a manner that we're going to know, because there's been a little bit of a, excuse me, there's been some nebulousness on like, well, when does this billion soul harvest actually begin? to be blunt with you. Well, no longer will there be any nebulous issue on like, when does this begin? One, Bob in 1983, through many witnesses said, there'll be three signs. One, abortion would be perfected by a pill. In 1983, he said that. Mike Bickle turned to him and said, Bob, do you even know what an abortion is? Bob said, abortion will be perfected by a pill. Now, folks, abortion has been perfected by a pill now from out of France, introduced into the United States now for many years. But do you know what just happened? It has now been authorized by this present administration that it is available without even a doctor's permission over the counter look at the research I did and I have this I did a podcast on this I have the information documented through Planned Parenthood it is available over the counter through the mail in most states, 
without any parental consent in any home. And so I'm nailing that one down and saying it is perfected and, listen, it's perfected and available. Done. Check mark. Now, is that a good sign? No. But do you know what Isaiah 60 says? Isaiah 60 says, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Then a light shall shine. Number two sign that Bob Jones said in 1983. He said that homosexuality as in marriage as a marriage will be celebrated in the United States. In 1983, he said that. Do you know what just... Now, that has been happening slowly for a period of time. But do you know what just happened in December 12th of 2022? And it happened then... Because the Republicans, and listen, Republicans, there's about as much, they are not saints. Let me just say it that way, okay? But this got snuck in because the Republicans would take control of the Congress, see, in January. So in Jan- December 12th, under the present administration, there was the reverse of DOMA, Defense of Marriage Act, and there was the passage officially of what? What's it called? Respect of Marriage Act. Well, it's not a Respect of Marriage Act at all. And what it is, it is a authorization of the celebration of homosexual marriage across the board that surpasses states' rights. It's wrong. But I'm bringing it up because it's a fulfillment of prophecy. Because it's a fulfillment of prophecy. We nail it down. See, finally, finally I can go, check. That's why I'm doing this. I'm not doing it to slam anybody. I'm doing it because in 1983, Bob Jones said, one, abortion will be perfected by appeal, and I'm adding, and be readily available. Check. Two, homosexuality in a marriage will be celebrated. Check. Because now it's the respect of marriage, which is not a respect of marriage. It is an absolute destruction of marriage. Now, but the third thing that Bob said that I shared with you when I was here last time was that Bob said that there would be 24-7, 365 worship would be watched on unplugged television sets on the wrist in rice fields in Asia. And this man threw his smartwatch up to me on the platform. Check. That's available and done. Because of the partnership with IHOP with multiple streaming devices. Has there been 24-7 prayer previously? Yes, but not worship and prayer. Now, all three of those things, guess what? Just authentically, we can draw a line in the sand for sure and go check, check, check. Now, why am I doing this with you? Right when I went forward and clearly wrote this all this up, guess what broke loose? Asbury. The very week I released this with clarity, 
the finger of God for a third time came down in Asbury. The third time, 1950, 1970, and 2023. It was February 8th, 2023, the fire of Asbury. It hasn't stopped, and it has now spilled over onto multiple university campuses all now in many places, and it's not going to stop. And then, and I got, and Jason was there and took his son. I got to be there. I then was back there for the 200th anniversary of the National Collegiate Day of Prayer. I mean, can you believe that for 200 years? time on 2-23-23 and then on 2-24 we have what the Jesus Revolution movie comes out <laughs> and it is blowing people's minds on the millions that it's br bringing in in the box office it is now being released in other nations now because it's done, doing so well and it's continuing. I know the narrative. I'm a movie buff. All four of my grown adult kids are all in the arts, entertainment, and media in professional ways. My oldest son has won a Peabody Award, which is the highest level award you can win in the secular film movie industry. My oldest daughter is a professional art therapist with a master's degree from the Art Institute in Chicago. My next son has a, a degree in 3D game art and animation. And then my youngest daughter had a scholarship at the New York Conservatory of Dramatic Arts. I know a little bit what I talk about. Because <laughs> I've gone on the journey with all four of my kids. And so... I was in the Jesus People movement. I know the narrative. I also have a nephew who did all of the music for all of those films that was the faith-based films from the Sherwood Baptist Church, Courageous and all of that. So I have a little bit of investment in some of this, all right? Now, so when I watch that, the narrative in the Jesus People movie is perfect. It is accurate, folks. It is accurate. It's not just that. I know the people who did the costuming. In, I know some of the people who did the costuming. I mean, the, 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 the cinematography. The, it, you know, it's actually rattling some of the cages, uh, some of the, um, the uh, Grammys. Because it's so, the, 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 the bar is raised up so much higher on for faith-based movies. And I got to meet with the director, and I got to meet with the one of the two brothers, the Irwin brothers, and, and meet with the producers. And it's just like, and they've got four more films that they're working on. And and I, I have some other things I'd like to say, but I better not, all okay? right? And they've moved to where I live. And I might get to be a little bit of a something or another, you know? <laughs> I do know a little bit about this stuff. So, but listen, see the narrative that's going on? There is something going on. This, listen, they were going to release that movie five years ago. Jesus Revolution. They had it done. They were going to release it five years ago but they were looking for a partner in the secular world that they didn't have. And then Lionsgate shows up. And that's a major partner, folks. And then it's not just that. It's the strategic timing of God. So look, we've got all. 
check mark, Bob Jones, three prophetic words. I gave them to you years ago. No, now, listen, check mark, check mark, check mark. And now we got the finger of God has come down. Oh, and now we've got the media mountain being touched. And even the world, listen, Rotten Tomatoes, I don't even know if you know what that even is, is giving it a 99% score. That's unheard of. It's unheard of. Folks, something has started. Something has started. I released a podcast. I've started another new podcast called Off the Cuff because I just want to be able to do conversational style. It's a little bit more relatable that I can release like quickly. And, 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 and it's just like, folks, something new has truly started. I want you to know something new has truly started. Do you know that something new has truly started? The bowls have been filled and the angels are going, hey, This millennial generation has never had its own move of God. Well, it's here. It's now here. It's yours. It's yours. But it's the joining of the generations. We have never had a move of God as long as I've lived, and that's 70 years, that has been the authentic joining of the generations. And we do this time. We do. We do. It's so awesome. It is so awesome. You're freaking awesome. You're amazing. You're amazing. We, listen, I have almost died four times. Jason knows my stories. I've gone to heaven and I've been sent back. I literally went to heaven. I had, I don't know how many organs were shut down. A couple of them were on the process. And I went to heaven. I saw my mom and my dad. I saw my, I saw my wife. She looked good. <laughs> she looked good back here. She looked really good up there. <laughs> but went, you know, everybody is beautiful in heaven. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Can we just turn that clock back an hour and put it over? <laughs> Crap. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Every, everybody in heaven is beautiful. Everybody, everybody is, of course, they're redeemed. Every, I, there's no disabilities in heaven. If someone was crippled, they ain't crippled no more in heaven. I went, I went, can somebody come play the keys for me? And uh, I went to heaven. Well, I didn't use my ball. I went to heaven. I've been through so much stuff that I lose track of time sometimes now. Barely too. Uh, thank you. Uh, I went to heaven. My kids are all married. They're doing well. 
uh, it's been through so much that I thought, wow, maybe I could stay. Because it wasn't my first time to go up there. And I kind of thought, well, because I went through three years. And I, I'm not telling you this for like a pity party, okay? It's just part of the amazing grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. And it's just part of my testimony, you know? Test. Test. <laughs> Ammonia. <laughs> And uh, and I went through three years where I, where I only got maybe two to three hours sleep a night, you know. And so when you go through that level of stuff, you know, and my kids are all doing well and I'm everybody married and everything. It's just like, well, okay, you know. And my kidneys were half shut down and two other organs were shut down. And I popped up into heaven. And uh, I saw my mom and dad, and they were holding hands. It was so gorgeous, because in the earth, they didn't. <laughs> I mean, they had to have for a while, because there's three of us. <laughs> ha! Oh. <laughs> and, and it was just delightful. I mean, I mean, oh. And, and I... Yeah, it was just incredible to see them. Wow, it, they were, my dad was so handsome. My mom was so beautiful and, and they liked each other. <laughs> it was like, miracles happened. It was just like, oh my God. I mean, it was just like, wow. It was amazing. And they looked at me and, with uh, love, care, and concern. And then over here was Michael Ann. And she was dressed in this incredible, beautiful emerald green dress that I bought for her when she was 29 years old. And, dude, do I ever remember that dress? Yeah. And, uh, was she ever full of life? And I was tempted to want to stay. But then there was this tug. It was like Paul the Apostle in the book of Philippians. If it was like just for me, I was like, yeah, but no. It's not about me, is it? <sighs> and all of a sudden, and I will try to say this discreetly, a messenger from heaven flew through the translucent veil while I was laying in my body, was laying in my bed, in my bedroom. And the messenger from heaven flew through the translucent veil, stands in my bedroom and speaks to me. And in my knower, I'm, I'm going like, wait, this is weird because I was with Bob Jones all these years and I know all about all this stuff. And I was like, but I never heard about this one. <laughs> and, uh, and I wish I had time to biblically ground all of this for you. And, uh, and because I'm in heaven. And, but now this messenger's in my bedroom. And the messenger talks to me from my bedroom uh, to me in heaven and says to me, Oh, God. Shoot. Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to, like, go here. And, and, and says to me, You must remain on this side. Your assignment on this side is not yet complete. Uh, you must stay on this side. Your assignment is not finished on this side. 
And then, again, the book of Philippians is just like illuminated in me. And, and then I find myself floating through time, space, the world, heaven. And my spirit man is floating. And, and I see my parents watching me. And then my spirit man hits my body lying in the bed. And my bedroom is filled with, but the messenger suddenly vanished. Not to be seen anymore. And my bedroom was now filled with the tangible destiny of God. And I laid there. And I just pondered, huh? And so you're stuck with me. <laughs> because this is the time. This is the time. All the years we have been praying, and we must continue to pray, and all the years we have been waiting, this is the beginning of the great harvest. It'll be a at least three generations movement in a generation. At least three, if not four. Generational movement in a generation. And God does have Simeons and Annas. There's the Moses, there's the Joshua, the Caleb. And then there's those, or the Aaron and the Hur, and there's the Joshua's out in the field. And let me close this with another thought. I've been having these dreams, sometimes triad dreams, three dreams in a night. And recently, on, and they'll, they seem disconnected, but they're totally connected. And recently, I had the third dream in a night where there were these, and I, there's a reason I'm going to tell this one. Uh, there were these discs, and they were all laying out on a table, and they were in disarray. And they were flipping all over the place. And they were not connected properly. And they were black and white disc. And they were flipping, 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 flipping. And they were, in the dream, they were just shifting all over the table. It was rather, I'm going to use the word, please don't stumble on it. It was rather magical. It was supernatural. And then all of a sudden, I'm a movie buff, and it changes to like Matrix. And they go to a uh, vertical patterns. And then everything that had been helter-skelter changes into patterns of alignment. And then the word of the Lord came to me. This is the third dream in that night. I've been having like a pattern of like once a week of what I call triad dreams. And then the word of the Lord came to me and he said, that which has been dysfunctional will become functional. That which has been in disarray will become in alignment. And then a phrase comes to me that I have not used, 
because other people use it. And I try to be really sensitive that when someone owns a phrase, it's theirs. But the reality is, if it's the Holy Spirit's, it's the Holy Spirit's. But I really do try to be careful and not borrow other people's stuff. But then the Holy Spirit says this to me in the dream. And he says, people are now going to find their tribe. They will find their family. They will belong. And people will find their tribe. I wrote this up. I did it in a podcast and I released it. Now watch this. The de- I just had a gathering in my home, about 25 liters. And it was really fascinating. But so right after I released this, the next day, I get a text from someone I had, I was really close to, but I've not heard from in 18 years. Out of the blue. Contacts me. The very same day, another amazing young next-gen prophet, this other guy I would say is a, would, would be an emerging apostle. The other, and, and then the same day, I also get a text from someone I have not heard from in 20 years. All of a sudden gets hold of me. And wants to connect with me again. Now, I had never broke fellowship with either of these people, ever. And I'd still carried them in my heart. They were both just in my home last week. And that dream had fulfillment in my own life. You'll find your tribe. A family. A place of belonging. I'm using that as an illustration that actually has just happened in my own life. And I'm going to prophesy that over you. There are things that might be in your own family. It's according to your sphere. It might be according to whatever your sphere is. It's going to be your family. It might be according to your whatever your mountain is. But I'm going to also speak it over King of Kings. And there might be some that seem to have been like they're wherever, but I'm just going to release a word because I see it written out here right now. And I know I just took twice as long. And I just see a word right now. Family reunion in Jesus' name. There is going to be not only a campground And there is not only a sacred ground, and there's not only a dream of anointing, of a geographical anointing upon this place, and there's not only uh, 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 new uh, Davids that are being raised up in this house, but I also say there uh, there is a family reunion that is going to happen in Jesus' name. So watch for even in your own your own nuclear families, some who have been astray, they're coming back home. I see it right now in the name of Jesus. They might come home like as it were on crutches. They might come home as it were they were broken, but I just call for them the prodigals in the name of Jesus. And just like I got text on some who had not been in communication with me for 18, 15, and 20 years, and we're just back in a love boat together again, I just declare that there is going to be a regathering where there was a scattering, and there is going to be a family reunion around King of Kings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.